morning and God bless you. Today is Thursday of the fifth week of Easter and our passage uh, is from the Gospel of John chapter 15. And this, remember, this is the, the Last Supper discourse. This teaching is taking place at the Last Supper, right before Jesus goes with his disciples to the Garden of Gethsemane. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, <laughs> we would need a lifetime to fully appreciate and even better, to fully experience and understand what Jesus is revealing and teaching here. Remain in my love. And notice he states specifically what he means by that. As the Father has loved me, so I also love you. Which means that the love he is calling us to abide in is the very love that Jesus shares with the Father in the Holy Spirit. It's to abide in Trinitarian love. That we are called to share in that is absolutely amazing if we really think about it. And notice that the emphasis in the beginning is on how we are loved. And therefore, our first we, um, let's say, response is one of receptivity. As the Father has loved you, has loved me, I also love you. Are we living in that flow of love from Jesus toward us? Are we living in that love? that Jesus is continually pouring into us by the Holy Spirit, the very love that he and the Father live together in an eternal communion is being poured into us at every single moment. And this love, why is this love joy? And notice that Jesus is saying that this is his joy and he wants it to be ours and it's complete joy, lacking nothing, because this love contains our whole, complete, perfect good. That good for which we were made, created as images of God. And what is that good? It is to, to know and to live deeply and fully in the intimacy of Trinitarian love. That's the good. And to live it concretely in the moment, in the day-to-day -day stuff of life. This is where the, the obedience comes in and why Jesus mentions commandments as a necessary part of abiding in this love. This seems <laughs> uh, contrary to what we might think in our, <laughs> our fallen human nature, uh, that obedience would be the source of joy and the greatest human flourishing. Because love is more than a feeling. 
or a sentiment. It is a choice that we make with our freedom. Jesus said, no one takes my life from me. I freely choose to give it and to give it away, to lay it down. Since abiding in love is first receiving the flow of love from God, our Christian life is a response. It's always a response. First, loving God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. That's the first and greatest commandment. And the first three of the Ten Commandments are about love of God. And then love of neighbor is another way that we respond to this flow of love coming to us. And Jesus specifies that when he says, to love one another as I have loved you. A love that is willing to sacrifice even to the laying down of our life. So, this is one way to understand the call of the priesthood. The most important thing that a priest witnesses is to witness intimacy with God, intimacy with Trinitarian love. This is the most important thing that a priest is called to witness. And yet look what the priesthood has become today. And therefore the greatest good that a priest desires for his people is what? The very good that we're talking about, that every person in the parish comes to know this love, this love of God through Jesus in the Spirit for them that they live in this flow of love, of Trinitarian love, and they live intimately in it, deeply in it, and live from it in the day-to-day -day stuff of life. This is the good that a priest should desire for all his people and the good that he must serve with his life of prayer, his life of pastoral ministry, his sacramental life. If this is not what the priest is witnessing and what the priest is serving, the life of the priest means nothing. It has lost its, its deepest reason for being. And remember, this is one of the reasons why deacons were called to take care of, of, of more of the service and the the administration and other things, so that the disciples could remain in prayer and immersed in the Word and to live deeply in that intimacy with God, which is what they would proclaim by their life and their ministry. So, let us pray for the grace to, to understand the height, the depth, the greatness of this love that Jesus is talking about, which is unchanging, undying, undiminished by our human limitations and imperfections. And, the, and this is why the grace of God wants to increase our desire and our capacity to receive this love. Because this is what gives sense and meaning to our Christian life. It's out of this that we live. This is what the Eucharist nourishes at the deepest level. Jesus loving his life in us. Loving his body and blood into us. And in that love is our strength, is our joy, is our peace, is every gift, is all the mercy we need, 
Everything we need is in that love. So God bless you. Let's pray for each other. And let us live and re um, remain in this love and bring that love into everything that we do throughout the day. Amen. God bless you.